One of the most popular fighters in mixed martial arts is a man named Donald Cowboy Cerrone, and it's easy to see why. He holds multiple records in the UFC, including the most wins, most fights, and most performance bonuses within the organization. On top of that, he is one of the most active fighters in the sport with a career going back all the way to 2006. So by now, his style and attitude are well known. He will fight anyone, anywhere, anytime, and is well rounded enough to give anyone an issue, no matter what style of opponent they are. He's only lost once in his long career via submission, and he has many submission victories to his name. So I wanted to break down just how good is Donald Cowboy Cerrone's grappling. Welcome to the Fight Dialogue, my name is Tim. So I'm going to give a detailed breakdown of Donald's grappling skill level as it relates to the sport of MMA. And as with previous installments of this series, I'm going to go over six key grappling skills and give my rating for them as they relate to the fighter on a scale of 1 to 10. Then I'm going to give you the average of those scores and give you an overall skill rating. And I wanted to note that I don't really base my opinions off of stats or charts, so don't expect to see anything like that in these videos. I like to form my opinions based off of my own observations of their fights and the quality of opponents that they have faced. So without further ado, every fight starts standing, so once again we will begin with Cowboy's takedown defense. In short, his takedown defense is good, but nothing spectacular. But there are several reasons for that. He has a very good knowledge of the moves and techniques required to stay standing, and does well enough defending against the lower tier wrestlers of the UFC. His particular style of striking, however, doesn't do him any favors in defending takedowns. Donald is a dynamic and long-range Muay Thai fighter, so he loves throwing switch head kicks, low leg kicks, and well-timed knees. All of these techniques can theoretically be countered with wrestling, unfortunately, so a lot of the time, he will end up being put on the floor as a consequence. He doesn't really mind being on his back, but I'll get to that in a minute. He doesn't have the fastest sprawl in the world, so he uses the cage when he can to stay standing. As the fight goes on to the later rounds, his excellent cardio is a great asset to have. Ground specialists who chain their takedowns together have more success against him, and chain wrestling will have more success against anybody in general. Cerrone does a pretty good job of fending off lone or half-hearted attempts, so his ability to stay standing greatly increases the longer the fight goes on. All in all though, half the time he displays a blatant willingness to go to the ground when seized by an opponent, so the best I can really give him is a 7 out of 10. Next we come to his ground and pound defense, and for this I will say it has gotten a lot better since his days in the WEC, but his grappling style doesn't do him any favors in this regard either. As I've explained in previous videos, the most effective defense against ground strikes is based off the controlling of your opponent's posture which in turn will control the distance between you and them, thus limiting the amount of power and momentum they can generate by the time their fist collides with your face. Some other less effective techniques include head movement from your back, double wrist control, or pushing your opponents away with your legs in order to disengage. Cowboy usually uses these types of defense, not because he's ignorant to the former techniques, but because these types of defenses help set up his submission counters. Cerrone loves to employ moves like arm bars and triangles from his back, which in order to do, he needs a bit of space to maneuver his hips and legs. That space that he provides for himself also gives his opponents the space they need to do damage to him. It's a very double-edged sword, but as I said, he's become more and more aware of this since his WEC days, and takes significantly less damage when defending from his back, nowadays opting for the overhooks rather than the wrist control. For ground and pound defense, I give him a 7 out of 10. Last on the defensive checklist, I'll discuss the submission defense. As I mentioned before, he has only lost once via submission, way back in the day against always dangerous Benson Henderson. So the quick version of this analysis is that his submission defense is of course very, very good. But let's look at why. We discussed how he's prone to falling on his back when seized by his enemies, and there's a good reason for this. Instead of trying to stay standing and failing, and then ultimately ending up in a less than favorable position like bottom side control or mounted, he bails on his takedown defense a little earlier than most, so he can end up in the full guard position. From here, he can not only use his submissions to remain offensive, but he's virtually unsubmittable so long as he maintains this position. One of the golden rules of a pure jujitsu match is, if you're within someone's guard and you want to submit them, then you must pass. The reason for this is because there's basically no way to effectively submit them from that position if the guy on the bottom knows what he's doing. 
Cowboy is a master of retaining and recovering the guard position. At this stage in Cowboy Cerrone's career, the opportunities to submit him are very scarce. The only way I see anyone submitting him at this point is if he's made vulnerable by strikes first. His stellar awareness of positioning and submission defense gets him an 8.75 in this regard. Now we move on to offense, and this is where Cowboy Cerrone really shines. If we take a look at Cerrone's takedown offense, you may be surprised to find that it is quite good, and it surprises his opponents as well. He uses a great sense of timing and fight IQ to take his foes to the mat when they least expect it. He's well-rounded in how he goes about it, but he will usually opt for a double or single leg over an upper body trip or unbalancing. But as I mentioned, he's knowledgeable in all aspects of takedown offense. It's not unlike his takedown defense in the sense that he is much more effective towards the later rounds of the fight. Besides the fact that we all know Cerrone is simply just a slow starter, he's got good cardio, as I mentioned, and takes advantage of any sloppiness and fatigue he notices as the fight drags on. And not for nothing, but Cowboy's favored method of takedowns is flooring people with strikes. Take that for what it's worth, but most of the time that he finds himself on top of his opponents on the ground is because he dropped them with a strike. His takedowns, I would say, are above average, but it's not exactly what he's known for, and it's not his go-to strategy. So I marked this category as a 7.75. Moving on, we arrive at ground and pound offense. This one really depends on position and circumstance for Donald, because he is extremely dangerous, but he has trouble keeping his opponents grounded at times. Stemming off of what I spoke about earlier in the video, you need space in order to effectively strike. Given too much space and your opponent will either stand up or try to submit you. If you pressure down upon them, then you are limiting the effectiveness of your ground and pound. This is the dilemma for those in the top position. Cowboy sometimes struggles finding the balance, and he isn't exactly known for his top pressure. Many times his foes will escape before he can land anything significant. However, if Cerrone drops you with a punch, and he knows you're not getting up anytime soon, he will unleash a barrage of fight-ending strikes from all types of angles. His killer instinct has earned him many TKO victories on the ground. In addition to this primal brutality, he has an excellent passing game that helps support his ground and pound. If he can get side control, mount, or back mount, you are most certainly going to take some punishing shots. So despite having somewhat of a conditional skill set when it comes to ground and pound, his victories have earned him the score of 8 out of 10. Finally, I'll break down his submission attributes. They are by far the best part of Cerrone's grappling abilities. Earlier I mentioned how he throws up a ton of submission attempts from off his back. His favorite submission by far is the triangle choke, and he can get it from either the bottom or the top position. His long legs no doubt help him constantly find it, and he is acutely aware of where his opponent's arms are in relation to their body. Stemming off the triangle position, Donald will also find arm bars and omoplata sweeps that he constantly threatens with. But the common theme here for Cerrone is that his best avenue for setting up his grappling is with his stand-up game. If he can hurt you standing, he will often use that opportunity to grab your neck. He'll take your back and strangle you when most guys expect to be finished off by strikes. Again, his killer instinct guides him to the path of least resistance. And if that path is ripping off your arms or choking you, then that's what he does. Even high-level grapplers need to mind their P's and Q's when Cowboy is submission hunting, because he can catch anyone at any time with a finishing hold. For submission offense, he gets a 9.25. So when everything is said and done and the numbers are ran, it gives Cerrone a total score of about 7.9. Some may think this is a low score for one so successful in the grappling department, but I assure you it's actually quite a good score. Regardless though, it does reflect Donald's game is at times unbalanced when all aspects are considered. I'll conclude by saying that throughout the course of Donald Cowboy Cerrone's career, his excellent ground skills haven't been a secret, but seeing each talent displayed individually has hopefully given you some new insight as to how Cowboy has earned his dangerous reputation on the ground. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I plan on doing more like it in the future. If you're interested in watching the previous videos of this series, I'm going to leave a link for that at the end of the video. Leave a comment for who you think I should do next. Make sure to like and subscribe, and thanks so much for watching. Take care. If you want to get the most out of your martial arts training, use the link in the description to get some FNX fitness supplements. You can get 15% off using my discount code, and it really helps out my channel a lot.